Hey, it's Jason Falls of the Marketing Podcast Network. You know we're trying to bring you the greatest education opportunities out there. We've got another one for you, folks. The Creator Economy Expo, CEX 2023, is for content creators and entrepreneurs interested in building and growing their content-first businesses without relying on social platforms. This year's Creator Economy Expo features 10 amazing keynote speakers and over 30 in-depth breakout sessions. Join 500-plus bloggers, podcasters, authors, newsletter writers, speakers, coaches, and consultants, and freelancers at the learning and networking event for content creators. Don't be left out. Plan to attend this year, May 1st through the 3rd, 2023 in Cleveland, Ohio. Register now and get early bird pricing and the Marketing Podcast Network has a special offer for you. You can get $100 off using the coupon code MPN100. That's MPN100. Head over to CEX.events to register. CEX.events, code MPN 100. Hey there, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. Real quick, I want to make sure you know that the world's leading B2B marketing expo is returning to the Los Angeles Convention Center on March 21st and 22nd. It's high time we got back together to learn, see the latest technologies and solutions, and network, right? Join thousands of marketing professionals just like you to learn from over 250 industry expert speakers, educational masterclasses, and over 300 exhibitors. And this year, your ticket also gets you into the Sales Innovation Expo and the Marketing and Advertising Expo. So it's like three conferences in one. It's March 21st and 22nd at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Go to b2bmarketingexpo.us to register. That's b2bmarketingexpo.us. The Marketing Podcast Network is a proud partner of the B2B Marketing Expo for 2023. We'll see you in L.A. Welcome to the Art of Sway. This is a podcast that brings you inside the world of marketing through the lens of influence. I'm your host, Danielle Wiley. Each week through candid conversations with industry insiders, we will uncover how influencer marketing is making an impact across all consumer buying habits and is changing the way we talk to each other. Talking with Mary Nice is always such a pleasure, but I have known Mary for a very, very long time, and it's always just a thrill to see how amazing the people that I care about have done with their lives, both personally and professionally, and Mary has really, really been killing it professionally. I hope you guys love this conversation that we have. We cover a bunch of topics, including how and why Mary became an influencer, why TikTok was a less scary platform for her when she was just starting out in her influencer journey, and then some really great, great conversations about the tricky ways that gender-related social conditioning can really screw us over at work. This was a great conversation. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Here you go. Mary Nice is a highly sought after leading marketing strategist and international keynote and workshop speaker who has led digital marketing programs for prestigious international companies, including the Walt Disney Company, Unilever, Kraft Foods, and Kimberly Clark. Before starting her own consulting practice, Mary was digital marketing director at Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, where she led a range of innovative digital initiatives, including overseeing the park's digital marketing strategy, establishing the digital marketing analytics practice, and starting the first social media listening program for the Walt Disney Company. Previously, Mary was an early member of the digital practice at Edelman, which is where we met. While at Edelman, Mary worked on various projects for international corporate clients such as Ben & Jerry's and S.C. Johnson, among others. So as I mentioned, Edelman is where we first met. We were both working in digital. You had the unfortunate job as intern for my husband. You always tell me it's not unfortunate, but... It's not unfortunate. (laughs) But since that time, we've actually worked on projects at Sway Group and kept in touch. And you were actually an early babysitter of my kids. So you are very special to the whole Wiley family. And we are so happy to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So let's dive in. I wanted to talk about your journey to becoming an influencer. So we know that you were at Edelman and then you went to... Walt Disney Company, and then you became a consultant and strategist. So 
if you want to talk a little bit about that journey, but then specifically about how that has transitioned into you actually becoming an influencer yourself. Sure, sure. Which is so weird to hear people talk about me as an influencer. But so I was kind of raised in the digital marketing sphere of my career. And I took a job at Disney leading digital marketing strategy. And I knew immediately when I went in house that I was made for the consulting world. I think, you know, as you get kind of further along in your career, you pretty much are like built for agency or you're built for in-house. And for me, I felt like I was built for agency world. So I started my own business and I had that business, which I still have today, six or seven years later, but it took a turn about a year ago. And this is one of those kind of life moments that just happens. And I found myself in the hospital with a slip disc that I had to have surgery on. And I woke up from surgery and I had to stay in the hospital for a few days. And I just was scrolling my phone thinking, I have something to say. I have things that I want to get out there. And I've always been hesitant to do that because I'm scared of what people will think. I'm scared that, especially in my work circles, that like they'll think that I think I know better than they do, or they think that I am conceited or, you know, fill in the blank of all those stories that go through your head. And I woke up and I was scrolling my phone, sitting in my hospital bed thinking, you know what? Screw this. Like I'm tired of playing small and being the second in my life to all of these other people that I'm playing for. And so I just started and we can talk later about the different topics that I talk about, but I just started and all of a sudden, a few weeks later, I was like scrolling my phone and it was like 100,000 views, 200,000 views, 300. It was on TikTok. So I started actually on TikTok because it was a little bit more of a safety net for me because my people weren't necessarily there. You know, like it's a little bit easier to be anonymous on TikTok. Whereas like on Instagram and LinkedIn, like those were the people that I was worried the most about what they thought. For some reason, like the whole stranger, like dude in mom's basement who likes to comment on like how white my teeth are or what have you, like that doesn't bother me. I'm so much more nervous getting in front of one person and speaking, but like put me in front of a hundred people who I don't know. I'll say anything. hundred (laughs) percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So I just started and I never expected anything of it. And more than anything, it was a step for me to really believe in myself and believe in my message. And then everything else came after that. So I never really sought to like influence, if you will, but it just happened. One of the things that's fascinated me as I've watched this journey over the past year is how organized it seems. And you have so many great topics and your newsletters, which you send out via LinkedIn, are so deep and rich and researched. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about that process of the content planning and what goes where and how you determine which platform and how far out in advance, because to me, it's kind of easier being a CEO than being an influencer. Well, it's really interesting. And I feel like I've learned a lot just about myself and the type of work I enjoy through this. But early on, it was pretty fly by the seat of my pants. And then I went through this period where I started approaching myself a little bit more like I approached my clients. Like we're going to do a content strategy. We're going to do planning. We're going to see how it all connects together. We're going to take one thing and da, 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 da. And I'll be honest with you, for me, it felt like I was actually getting a little bit away from what I loved and the heart of it. And so I'm in this process right now of trying to figure out how to reconcile those two. But you mentioned my email and that's where a lot of my content comes from. And Through this process, I really learned that I love deep research. And that's not surprising given I've run the analytics practice at Disney for digital and social, and I do a lot of analytics work. But I love research, like finding nuggets and figuring out how to string that story together. And I think the reason why I like pour my heart into those emails is because it's the longest form where I can say, this thing can't be solved in 15 seconds. You need to know everything that's happening in your brain, everything that you have been conditioned to receive 
So then you can see that path forward. We can't really get to that in 15 seconds, but you definitely can get closer to it in email. I know everything about what you talk about and write about because I get your newsletter weekly and I'm one of the old people who watches you on Instagram, (laughs) TikTok. But why don't you take this opportunity to tell us a little bit about who your audience is and what you are talking about on all these platforms? Sure. So I am endlessly fascinated at how the brain, like how neurologically we are wired, how we are conditioned, and then just the innate kind of who we are and what we want, how all that comes together in the workplace. And I'm really passionate that work and careers and jobs and the environments that we build in those areas can really not only propel us forward and help us achieve our dreams, but can make the world a better place. If our workplaces are solid, our workplaces are connected, our workplaces are places where we learn to be human together, then our world is going to be a better place. And we've just gotten so far away from that. And so I use these platforms to really explore topics of just how to make work come alive, whether that's productivity, whether that's managing people better, whether that's learning how to be managed, all of those topics kind of come alive at different parts in my content. Tell me about your audience. And I'm assuming it's kind of different depending on which platform we're talking about, but who are you reaching? Yeah. So TikTok is a little bit younger. It's actually not all that much younger, but generally it is people who've been in their careers for anywhere between 12 and 25 years, but it tends to be either middle management level or higher. And mostly because those are my people and it's mostly women in corporate who have been really successful in their careers and who are looking to understand like, dang, I'm like really good at what I do, but why does this just feel like not enough? Or why do I just feel unhappy when I should feel really grateful? And you know, all of those tropes that are just feel so real today. So that's typically who's following me on all the different channels. Super fascinated in how these issues are different or actually exist for women when they might not for men, and the difference in the genders when we talk about some of these issues, especially in the workplace. What have you seen? I think it's absolutely different. It doesn't mean that men don't have their fair share of issues because I know that they do. But when it comes to women and especially the performance of it all and the pleasing of it all and the need to play small and the conditioning to play small, I think that plays such a role for women in the workforce that just isn't as present for men. It's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It just is what it is. It's just there for women. It's really hard. It gets stuck in your brain. I actually saw this a lot at Edelman because I did work with my husband. We were at similar levels and just looking at the pay disparities, which I got to see because I was married to him. Second of all, just the way men can say something and how it's perceived and just seeing how other people react to what comes out of a woman's mouth versus what comes out of a man's mouth and the way that it's said. So I think on the one hand, there is the conditioning, but on the other hand, we do receive different messaging back. I can't tell you how many times I've been told that I need to try to be nicer or I was being too harsh or I need to dial back my feedback or I think there's just certain messaging that women receive that just helps reinforce that conditioning that we're brought up with. A hundred percent. And I think about it too. This is why I'm so passionate about integrating the conditioning on both sides, but also what that conditioning does to our brains, because just as we have been conditioned to play small, to be second fiddle, to think that we need to please everybody, men have been conditioned in another way and society has conditioned them in another way. So All of us have these patterns that are running deep in our brains that if you really get to the heart of the matter, a lot of times there's maliciousness behind it for sure, but many times there's not, and there's just not a knowledge of what is happening. And so if we can empower people to understand the humanity of it and what physiologically is happening to us in these moments, then we can see it happening, take a step back and everybody can talk about it from an even playing field. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Because it's not malicious. Totally. And I don't know, have you experienced this too? Sometimes my biggest challenges have been with women in the workplace. Every time my biggest challenges have been with women. Because I feel like a lot of times with men, if you bring it up, they'll be like, oh, I didn't know I was doing it. If you bring it up to a woman, totally just crushes their whole identity because they're like, wait a second, you know? And so I think that's what we're talking about here, that it's not easy as somehow the kind of literature and the topics on Forbes or the Inc. magazines make it out to be. Like it's a lot deeper. And by understanding what's going on, we can work through it. As I look at competitors in the space, a lot of my competitors are women-owned businesses and we don't talk to each other. And there's just a different vibe there. And then I look at PR where I came from, where most of the CEOs or founders are men and they talk to each other and they like golf with each other and it's still competitive, but there's a relationship there that I think as women, we've been conditioned into having a more nasty competitive that that ends up hurting us. I think that's right. And I think a lot of it is because we've had to freaking claw our ways to owning our own businesses. And you're like, wait a second, if I like stand down for one second, is this all going to crumble? And it's like, we're all in these house of cards. And that's why I find women groups so empowering and encouraging and masterminds and things like that, where you can just really ideate because I find my best business propelling ideas definitely come from my women relationships. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Okay. So you did something very exciting. You did some sponsored work for Lenovo and it was on business. It was like a business insider Lenovo collaboration. Tell us how that came about and what that felt like to suddenly be sponsored and you made it to the big time. (laughs) Made it to the big leagues, baby. Well, so throughout this, as my following continued to grow, I'd get these random emails. Typically, I ignore them or I write back and I'm like, hey, I just can't do it right now. And I'm also really protective of my community. So I'm really choosy about who I'll put in front of them. Well, I got this email from Business Insider saying, hey, will you be the talent (laughs) It still makes me laugh. We'd be the talent in this video shoot for, it was a Lenovo Verizon partnership. And I was like, okay, this feels like something. And I think I texted you and I was like, this feels like something, right? (laughs) So yeah, it was great. So the Insider is the parent company of Business Insider. They actually have a content creation agency within the company. And Lenovo Verizon's media partner actually did this buy with Business Insider for a new laptop that Lenovo was putting out that actually has 5G Verizon integrated into it, which is like freaking cool. You don't have to have Wi-Fi. I know. I was like, and the computer is totally legit. But anyway, I don't get paid for selling computers, but if I did, I could probably sell them because this computer is legit. But yeah, I went to New York I had filmed three videos for them. There was hair and makeup. There were all these agencies there. And in my brain, I'm like, because I come from the marketing background, obviously, I'm like, well, that agency is this much. That agency costs this much. And I'm like, y'all are spending how much? But it was so fun. And I'm really happy with how they turned out. And, And it just spoke to... I just think the realness that people want, because I asked the client from Lenovo, why did you want me in it? And she was like, gone are the days of hiring somebody who doesn't know what's going on, you know, what the capabilities of this machine can do, why it's important. And when you deliver a message, I think people really listen to you. And so it just felt so good and reassuring. And I just was so flattered. We'll have to, we should hire you to do a video for Sway Group because you just spoke to authenticity of an actual people are influencers because they're coming from an authentic space and truly have a recommendation and it fits within their life. And it's not, doesn't seem like a total non sequitur for them to be talking about this product or service. It made me like just even expand how I even thought about it because they didn't even want me for my channels or my following. They wanted me because people see through the baloney of advertising. They know if a person sitting there is talent 
hired from a talent agency or actually like knows this space. And so it just really spoke to me. And you loved it. And so now you know that this is... I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Now I'm like, how do I replicate that? But we'll figure it out. It'll come. If it's supposed to come, it'll come. I have a feeling it will come. So this is a question that we're going to be asking all of our guests. And I am curious to know what your favorite commercial was when you were a kid. Like what commercial sticks with you? So I'm like a 90s kid, but was the game Mall Madness. And it was this board game that, this is what I'm talking about, the dang conditioning of women. (laughs) It was this board game and you got a real credit card and you got some money and you went around the mall and you bought stuff. And it was like, I'm trying to think of the theme song. It's Mall Madness, catch Mall Madness. And then it said on the commercial, it said, only withdrawals, no deposits. (laughs) So it's basically like, hey, 10-year-old girl, you are conditioned spending money at the mall makes you happy. And so I was like listening to the commercial and like the the rhetoric behind it. I'm like, it's like you get a real credit card and cash, all withdrawals, no deposits. Oh my gosh. Isn't that awful? (laughs) Well, yes, absolutely. Totally awful. But (laughs) so little me in the 80s would have loved that game. It was so fun. It was so fun. So that's the one. Well, this was amazing. And so I want to thank you for being my first guest on. Absolutely. I'm honored. I'm honored. And I also wanted to remind everyone to follow Mary on you are on both Instagram and TikTok. And your handle is very Mary nice. And then how can they, what's the best way for people to find you on LinkedIn so they can subscribe to your newsletter? Just look up Mary nice and it should come up. Okay, perfect. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please check back next Monday for a new episode featuring marketing conversations through the lens of influence. I am your host, Danielle Wiley, and this is The Art of Sway. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Kevin Hunt is one half of a great podcast called Hanson & Hunt on MPN. Kevin, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Hanson & Hunt is a place for marketers and communicators for brands, companies, and organizations of all kinds to stay on top of industry news and trends. Eric Hanson and I discuss things that make them think, things that help them do their jobs better, things that help them hopefully show up smarter with the boss. We are a monthly show. We've been at it since. 2014. Awesome. Where can people subscribe? Their preferred podcast app, of course, or head to hansonandhunt.com or follow our show at marketingpodcast.net. You heard him, folks. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.